Tim here, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about whittling. And just remember, the difference between whittling and carving is whittling is generally done with, with just a knife or a few uh, tools like that while you're holding your piece in your hand and using your knife to, to carve. And carving is with a mallet and chisel. So I'd like to unpack my portable whittling kit that I take with me oftentimes on, on trips or family vacations and where I have time to, to uh, sit down and do some whittling. And in here I have enough stuff to, to uh, do a lot of different things. In the very top I have notebooks where I can sketch and write down ideas and things. One of my favorite things in here is a tool kit that my grandpa had. And this is uh, Exacto Tools. And he had uh, inspired me with some of his carvings, a chess set and different things that he's done. And three of the most important ones for spoon carving I, I keep in the top here. And I'll talk about those in a little bit. And I've got uh, straps for sharpening and some pencils and sandpaper and pencil sharpener, different things like that. We're going to focus mainly on what's in these four drawers. So starting with the top one here, I've got my main whittling knives. If there's just the one workhorse knife, and if you watch my other video on how to carve a chain like this here, uh, you'll see me use this one here. This is one it's very similar but very fine detail. And a couple others. This one's actually made out of an old straight razor. I bought that at a garage sale. And this one's a little bit dangerous because it's sharp on both sides, but you can work your way into a, a area to clean it out. You just gotta make sure you don't grab the back side. Over on this side, I have some small palm tools, and these would be good for linoleum block cutting. This one here is a, that's a, a gouge. I got a couple different size gouges. These are all small and these are never struck with a mallet. Very useful for maybe lettering on a little project or something like that. So, top drawer. This one here I've got, actually this is a utility knife. I like this one, it's uh, changed the blade out. Utility knives are very useful for whittling. If you don't want to sharpen, you can just swap the blade out. These are buck knives. I think this is a, yeah, this is a Leatherman, which isn't very good for carving, but it's got other things in here that are useful. There's a paring knife that, the handle's a little short, so maybe for some of small hands, this would be okay, but it's, just cutlery knives. And sometimes I, I pick these things up at, I'll be careful here, I'll cut myself. These are cutlery knives that have been repurposed. That's one there, the steak knife. It works kind of good, it's not that great, but that's some of the ways you can start your collection if you want to. Now these are kind of interesting. These are um, punches, detail punches that texture your tools, te texture your workpiece rather. This is a, uh, I bought this at an estate sale. This is actually an awl, so it'll be used like this here, or like this, for uh, leather work. But I've used it for very small detail. A stippling punch, and that would be, you know, when you stamp, I actually have a mallet on top here that I use but you can stamp the background of your workpiece. Next drawer down, all my Exacto tools. So Exacto has some advantages. You can change, like I said, change the blade out. And I've used this one as in kind of like a setting where you're using like a gouge. You can kind of get a little bit of cut like that. It's limited, but it works. This one I actually made up out of a nail, a cut nail. 
little chisel. Uh, you can get gouges like this here. And you can resharpen them. The one thing I found with X-Acto though, especially like these here, if you're using them for a long period of time, that knurled uh, part there that tighten, where you tighten your blade in, that really starts to eat into your fingers. It's just, it's not very comfortable to hold for long periods of time. But they are uh, a useful tool, especially in smaller detail. These are, this is a little sander, band sander, extra exacto blades. This one's got uh, one with little saw teeth in it, real tiny. This is probably more for model work in balsa and that kind of thing, which I don't do much of in balsa. Got a little miniature spoke shave. So those are exacto. And these are more of the workhorse skew chisel. That's very useful. And you'll see that in that other video where I'm carving the chain. And again, more palm tools and a thin bladed knife. This is kind of like for chip carving. It's got the right angle for that. That's similar to the exacto number 11 blade. More skew chisels. And this one is a tool I made up, but this is a use specific tool for making a stop cut in a particular project I was doing one time. Again, this one is never struck with a mallet. Um, it's kind of like half of a spoke shave in a sense. And another gouge. This set of tools was given to me many years ago. I made the pouch for it. And these are uh, just a, a carving set, probably for linoleum or block print, but they're they're kind of useful, not, just cool because they're rosewood handles and a chisel, a gouge. Now these first tools I, I set out here are the sp are spoon carving tools. This one is a hook knife. So these are these two tools here you can carve spoons with. And I start out a spoon with a hatchet so that that would rest on a block of wood. It's good when you're doing some rough work to have something besides your body to stop the knife. This is yellow pine. This, this is a sample for some half round molding and this works pretty good to, although this is a, a very tough wood to carve, but it holds fine detail. So this, you make a spiral lines at the right uh, intervals. So that's what I would use uh, whittling knives for. And you don't need all this stuff to start with. You just had one knife, one, this one or that other longer one. Just start with something and see where it takes you. Well, that's my whittling kit. That's the portable one I take with me most of the time when I'm traveling, if I have time to, to work with it. And I hope you find something useful, at least encouraging to get started. If you like what you saw, give a thumbs up and please subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Let's start again. Let me do it again. <laughs>